stick around and find out how you can enter for a chance to own your own Lightning Collection Dragon Dagger. Hello, Morphin Shorts here. I wanted to thank everyone that has watched the videos I've made over the past month. The support has been much appreciated. But I've been keeping a secret. In all the videos from Season 1, I've hidden clues to help you enter for a chance to own a very cool piece of Power Rangers merch. Here's how to enter the giveaway. Step 1. Subscribe to the channel. Step 2. Sign up for the Morphin Shorts newsletter. The link is in the description below. Step 3. Fill out the entry form that's also linked with a secret code. What's the secret code, you ask? In each one of the videos, there's one highlighted letter in the captions. Find those highlighted letters, combine them with the two free letters here, and unscramble the letters to get the secret code. The giveaway is open to everyone. Terms and conditions apply. It'll run for about a month. Thank you all again, and happy hunting. Here are the top eight things you should know about Power Rangers. A cat is a Power Ranger? In the comics, when Jason Trini and Zack jetted off into space to eventually become, spoilers, the Omega Rangers, they ran into a cat-like alien imbued with morphine grid energy protecting a child. After being cured, the space cat, Yale, joined the trio's crew aboard their spaceship. Yale survived, among other things, a corrupted blue Omega Ranger and an encounter with space vampires. Yeah. A quick glimpse into Yale's backstory revealed that they were born as the runt of a litter, part of an enslaved family. Because of their small size, Yale was able to escape and befriend a small child. The child's parents turned Yale away, deeming them too dangerous to be around. Eventually, they settled on a refugee planet where, after defending other children from a giant serpent, Yale heard the call of a mysterious voice, summoning them to a temple. It was the Blue Emissary, one of six people who became the guardians of the Morphing Grid eons ago. The Blue Emissary explained that Yale was the final piece of a puzzle that had guided them for millennia, and with that, presented Yale with the Omega Blue Morpher. Yale then leaps into action as the Blue Omega Ranger, wielding the power of the elemental water. They are the first non-humanoid Power Ranger in TV, film, and comics canon. So now you can tell all your friends, did you know that a cat is a Power Ranger? Did you know about Alpha-1? In the comics, Alpha-1 was built for Zordon to help aid him in his battle against the forces of darkness. On one of its missions, Alpha-1 was ambushed and nearly destroyed. Discovered by a ship passing by, Alpha-1 was able to rebuild itself and resume its quest. Alpha-1 found its way back to Earth centuries later and helped the Rangers from the shadows when Jason and Trini disappeared. It revealed itself to the Rangers soon thereafter at an assault at the Angel Grove Museum, helping them and earning their trust. However, that trust was short-lived, as Alpha-1 showed its true colors. Its time away from Zordon had disillusioned Alpha-1. It began to believe that Zordon's tenet of not escalating a fight was a weakness that would only prolong the conflict against evil. It then decided that in order for its prime directive to be fulfilled, Zordon needed to be eliminated as an obstacle. Assembling for itself a giant mech, it attacked the command center. Alpha-1 was a master of battle tactics and had the rangers on the ropes, and it wasn't until the support of Alpha-5 that the rangers were able to end the battle. Alpha-1 then revealed that it was just a shell of a body, pledging to be back as it self-destructed. So what do you think? You knew about Alpha-5, but did you know about Alpha-1? Why was the guy from Breaking Bad in the Power Rangers movie? The beloved anti-hero of Breaking Bad, Walter White, was played to perfection by Brian Cranston, whom was known mainly as the lovable dad on Malcolm in the Middle, until he landed the role in Breaking Bad. He was also cast as Zordon in the most recent Power Rangers movie, but did you know that this was not the first time he was been involved with the franchise? Among his first roles in Hollywood was doing voice acting. He had a few parts for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He is credited on IMDb as being snizzered in the season 1 episode Foul Play in the Sky in Twin Man in A Bad Reflection on You. Cranston evidently left a mark on the producers of Power Rangers since they gave the character Billy, the Blue Ranger, his last name. He confirmed this in an AMA on Reddit. The movie also repositioned Zordon as the Red Ranger of his time before Rita, as the Green Ranger, betrayed him and their team for the Zeo Crystal. That story beat, in addition to being a cool way to adapt the Zeo Crystal into the movie, also fulfills Cranston's dream of being a Power Ranger, as he plays up in an interview with Stephen Colbert. So, in many ways, signing up for the role of the latest Zordon was Brian Cranston coming full circle in his career. Pretty interesting, if you ever wondered, why was the guy from Breaking Bad in the Power Rangers movie? What if Rita's henchmen became Power Rangers? In the TV show, Tommy's time as a Green Ranger came to an end when Lord Zed was able to create his own team of evil Power Rangers by stealing Tommy's powers. Unfortunately, without the time nor budget, the Dark Rangers didn't do much other than stand around looking like dollar store gimps. So when the opportunity arose in the comics, the creators were able to do a second version of the Dark Rangers. Similar to the show, Lord Zed sent out a monster that absorbed the Ranger's power blast as it died, recharging the green chaos crystal that was hidden in its body. Zed then used the energy to empower Rita's henchmen with morphing grid energy, turning them into new Dark Rangers. Goldar became Dark Ranger Yellow, Squat was blue, Babu was black, and Finster, pink. Zed also needed a leader for this team, so he created a clone of Rita from a special batch of putty, creating Dark Ranger Red. The second version of Dark Rangers were far more formidable, and even had their own animalistic terror zords. The Power Rangers were on the verge of defeat until the arrival of a new Green Ranger, who smashed the Green Chaos Crystal, severing the Dark Ranger's power source. The aftermath saw the disappearance of the Rita clone, and left the Rangers wondering, who is the new Green Ranger? But none of that would have been possible if the comic creators never wondered, what if Rita's henchmen became Power Rangers? 
I didn't know they were Power Rangers. Here's a list of a few actors and actresses that used to be Power Rangers, in no particular order. Number 1. Anna Hutchison, Jungle Fury Yellow Ranger. After the series ended, she was able to land the part of Jules in the movie Cabin in the Woods. She then starred in the second season of Spartacus as Leda. Number 2. Eka Darville, RPM Red Ranger. He was also in Spartacus, cast as Petros for the first season, but he might be better known for being in all three seasons of Netflix and Marvel's Jessica Jones as Malcolm. Number 3. Emma Lahana, Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger. Like her character, Lahana branched out into the music industry, but she is maybe best known for being in Marvel's TV series Cloak and Dagger for two seasons as Detective Brigitte O'Reilly. Number 4. Archie Cow, Lost Galaxy Blue Ranger. He was also in the first season of Chicago PD as Detective Sheldon Jin, but he is perhaps best known for being in CSI for 100 episodes as lab technician Archie Johnson. Number 5. Rose McIver, RPM Yellow Ranger. She has gotten parts on Once Upon a Time as Tinkerbell, and iZombie as the lead character Olivia Moore. She is currently leading the TV show Ghosts. Have you noticed any other Power Rangers showing up in your favorite shows? If not, you can always tell this list to your friends and make them say, I didn't know they were Power Rangers. Time that the Ninja Shuttles became Power Rangers. In the comics, the Rangers teleported to New York City after it was detected that Tommy had morphed there. He had gone to the Big Apple for personal reasons, but hadn't been back for some time. They arrived to find him fighting against the Turtles and joined in to help their teammate. In the melee, Kimberly asked Tommy what he was doing, to which Tommy requested her trust as he left. Soon thereafter, the Rangers and the Turtles realized that they weren't enemies. Meanwhile, Tommy made his way back to the Foot Clan, which he infiltrated in order to locate his childhood friend, a fellow orphan named Tyler, who had joined the Foot. But unbeknownst to Tommy, the Shredder had allowed him into the Foot in order to use his abilities to steal a set of batteries. Those batteries were used to power a device that blocks a person's access to the morphing grid, allowing Shredder to claim the Dragon Morpher to become a Ranger himself. Luring the rest of the Rangers into a trap, Shredder was able to block their access to the grid as well. He held Tommy as ransom for the rest of the Morphers. Without the ability to morph, the Rangers decided the best course of action was to allow the Turtles, along with April O'Neil, access to their powers and become the Mighty Morphin Ninja Turtles. Now you can tell your friends about the time that the Ninja Turtles became Power Rangers. This is how the comics made the metallic armor better. Kimberly learns from Trini the existence of other Rangers beyond just them and the Omegas. This begins to create self-doubt in her, as well as a feeling that she is replaceable. It leads her to ask Billy for help upgrading their powers, which she hopes would address her feelings of inadequacy. Combing through the archives, Billy is able to unearth files that point to a possible upgrade, and sends both Kim and Tommy into the pocket dimension to test his designs. Calling upon the metallic armor, the pair easily dispatch the various enemies that Billy has built into the simulation. But the armor's huge energy draw on the morphing grid causes errors in the dimension, stranding the rangers and drawing in copies of future arch enemies like Sledge and Trakina. Tommy is injured finding the much more powerful villains. Kimberly retreats, and the pink emissary appears to her. They explain that while the unstable metallic armor played a part, it was ultimately Kimberly's fear of the future that drew in the villains. Restoring her memories of the events of the Shattered Grid, Kim realizes that the future ranger teams aren't replacements for her or her friends, but are the ones who will carry on the fight against evil. With this, she is able to summon copies of future pink rangers, destroy the villains, and return her and Tommy to the real world. So while the TV version was a glittery letdown, this is how the comics made the metallic armor better when the Ninja Turtles got their own Megazord. In the comics, the Ninja Turtles, along with April O'Neil, were given access to the morphing grid after Shredder blocked the Rangers from theirs. They jumped into action once Rita, who had an uneasy alliance with Shredder, attacked New York City with a monster. After the defeat of the monster, and while the depowered Rangers infiltrated the Technodrome as ninjas to free a trapped Tommy, Rita made Bebop and Rocksteady grow to monstrous size, leading the Turtles to summon the Megazord. Shredder, who had the Green Ranger's powers, called the Dragon Zord to the battle. Clearly outmatched, the Turtles' prospects were grim until Metalhead joined the melee. Billy had modified Donatello's Shrink Ray to grow Metalhead. It took out Bebop and Rocksteady, and its energy transfer ability allowed the Megazord to blast the Dragon Zord, taking it out of commission. This leads Shredder to retreat and call on the Technodrome to fire on the Zords. That's when Zordon reminded everyone that Zords were infinitely adaptable, resulting in the combination of Metalhead and the Megazord, forming the Turtle Megazord. With the Power Sword, the Technodrome was sliced into two. The heroes then chased Shredder and Rita to the Moon Palace, the Rangers having regained access to the powers. Tommy was able to reclaim his Morpher from Shredder. In the end, the villains escaped to Dimension X, from where they would undoubtedly return. So now you know when the Ninja Turtles got their own Megazord.